Hello everyone and welcome to this month's synth tutorial with Computer Music. This month we're delighted to announce the release of the New Look Zebra CM plugin, which is the plugin we're going to be using today to create a riser sound. Risers are really useful for creating peaks and interest in electronic music and also televisual and cinematic cues. It's a little bit like a cymbal roll, but in an electronic form. The first thing you're going to need to do is load up your favourite door and then plug in an instance of the Zebra CM plugin. Although the plugin itself may look quite different, we still need to start from a point of initialize. So we're going to go to the display at the top of the screen here, or top of the plugin, and we're going to click, come down to where it says init, which stands for initialize, and click. At which point we'll hear a sound like this. Now at the moment we're hearing a single oscillator, it's actually oscillator number one. However, to create our riser sound, we don't want to use either oscillator 1 or oscillator 2. So we're going to go to oscillator 1, which is the only one that we're hearing at the moment. We're going to go to the volume control and turn it all the way down. And when we turn that all the way down, you shouldn't hear any sound. Now the reason we're eliminating oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 is because we're going to be working with white noise today. So we move to the right hand side of the plugin where it says noise and we're going to go to the volume control within the noise settings and we're going to turn that up to around about the 12 o'clock position. As you can hear, we're getting white noise. The next thing you might like to try is switching it from a mono mode to a stereo mode. If you listen carefully, when you hear it in mono mode, the sound is very central, but when we switch to stereo, it broadens the pan considerably, giving it a much wider sound stage. At the moment, the white noise is quite loud and we can hear all the frequencies under the sun. What we're going to do next is go over to the filter section, go to the cutoff control and reduce that to roughly the 12 o'clock position. You can hear that's quite dull by comparison, but that's what we need right now. One of the reasons we want to dull that sound via the cutoff control in the filter is because we're going to be using the envelope 2 control to modulate that process. So now we visit envelope 2, which you can see very clearly marked at the bottom here, and we're going to change both our attack phase all the way up and our decay phase all the way up. While we're here, we're going to go to the sustain level. And for those of you that know a little bit about synthesis, you will know that while attack and decay control the timing elements, the sustain control is directly connected to a, effectively a sustaining level or a volume or amplitude to be more accurate. We need to reduce this to zero, so we're going to click on that pot and take it all the way down. Having made those alterations to envelope 2, we're now going to make sure that envelope 2 is pointing towards the filter. Now by default, we have a spare user-defined pot right here, which is currently assigned to envelope 2. It's actually done so by default, but if it's not set to envelope 2, just make sure it is by selecting it from this drop-down. We're now going to grab hold of the pot and we're going to drag that up so that it reads roughly 40 on that display at the top. And hopefully when that happens, when you play a note now, you'll hear this. So you can hear the sound rising quite nicely there. Now it stands to reason that if you would like to experiment a little bit with your envelope phases, you could shorten the attack time and shorten the decay time on envelope 2 and you'll make the process far quicker. However, we're going for quite a long riser effect, so we're going to keep our attack and decay phases quite long, so we're going to turn those up to the maximum again. While our riser sound is beginning to sound quite effective, it's a little bit on the boring side, so we're going to instigate an LFO to add a little bit of movement and interest. We're going to be using LFO1, and you can locate this by moving to the LFO section on the right-hand side of the screen. So make sure LFO1 is selected, go to the Waveform drop-down, and we're going to select Square Wave, Low, High. While we're in the LFO section, we're also going to attend to the synchronization aspect of the LFO. We want it to sync directly to the door, but we want it to sync to a quarter note. So we go to the synchronization drop-down, and we're going to select quarter note. The reason we're selecting quarter note is because the nature of the waveform we have chosen here is going to do an entire cycle over a period of a quarter note. So it therefore means that we're going to get an effect momentarily, which is a little bit like a, an offbeat hi-hat in a drum pattern. Before we can hear the LFO in full effect, we need to dictate where it's going to be modulating. And we actually want the LFO to modulate the volume or the amplitude of our sound or patch. So we go back to the noise section 
And where it says volume, we're going to decrease this to around about the 9 o'clock mark. That reads roughly 40 on the display at the top. And right underneath it, you'll see that there's another drop-down. We're going to select from this drop-down LFO1. Now at the moment, we still won't hear any difference. We still have exactly the same sound. And the reason for that is because of a new way that the Zebra CM plugin works. You might have been wondering what these little dots refer to. These are actually modulation sources. So by clicking and holding on this little dot to the right hand side of the volume control, we can then drag up a value and the point when we do that we should start hearing our LFO taking effect. And there it is. So consequently, if you watch the LFO section on the right hand side, you can see what's happening. And the more modulation you apply at the noise stage, you can literally get it to turn on and off. But we don't want it to be quite so dramatic. Now it's also worth playing around with some of the other envelope settings. It is entirely dependent on your track, whether it's slow, fast or whatever, as to how fast or slow you want your attack and decay phases to be. A good thing to do is to experiment with both phases of envelope number two, which will change the timing element of the rise and the fall. But also, you could experiment with where you actually place the triggering of the actual riser within your track. So you might only trigger it, say, six beats before you want it to peak. Another little tip is to use envelope 1, which is currently controlling the volume or the amplitude of our signal. If we take the attack phase up a little bit, it'll just create a slightly softer effect. And if we elongate the release phase, it'll have a similar effect on the back end, just letting it dissipate a little bit more, and more naturally. That's our riser patch for this month. Do enjoy and we'll see you next time.